Hi, Kipsters. Today we're going over 7th grade H2, compare two texts with different genres. We're going to click Learn with an example so we can see the key points here. Authors sometimes revisit or reinterpret the same topics, themes, and stories as other authors. So two authors that are talking about the same topic or theme or story, but write it differently. The way authors present ideas depends on the genre or text type they use. Some inform, explain, persuade, that's their purpose. Others may entertain or show a more personal perspective. Reading texts with different genres can help readers understand different perspectives or gain a more in-depth understanding of a topic. When you compare texts about the same topic, think, how do the authors in different genres build on, challenge, or reveal new viewpoints about the topic? Let's do an example. We're going to see two dots at the top, two yellow dots, which means we'll probably read two different passages. Ten moons passed, and then sure enough, a little babe was born to the old woman. Strange to say, the infant was no bigger than a finger. The uh, old couple threw up their hands in astonishment. They called the tiny fellow Usunboshi, and in spite of his ridiculous size, they raised him with much care and love, hoping all the time that one day he would shoot up into a son of whom they could be proud. But alas, Isamboshi never grew larger. And when he reached his 13th year, he was as small as, he, as when he first saw day. The disappointment was so great to the poor old couple that it now outbalanced every other feeling. They began to hate the sight of the child. What can you conclude about Isamboshi? Isamboshi remembers a small child who never grew. Isamboshi's parents were upset he never grew. Isamboshi's parents were afraid of him when he was born, or they treated him poorly when he was growing up. Well, they didn't treat him poorly when he was growing up. They started treating him poorly after, and they took care of him with much care and love when he was born. So it must be that he was upset that they never grew. This quote, the disappointment was so great, that the poor old couple, that it now outbalanced every other feeling. They began to hate the sight of him. So I was right. So you're going to make a conclusion or an inference about them. And then now I'm reading a text from a historical novel about the spy. So it's a novel. It's fiction, right? So I'm going to get that same information, but show it's different. The previous text suggested that Sorrel trusted Harrison as a spy. How does the historical novel build or challenge that idea? He said slowly, we've had no word of union movement. The spy bobbed with joy. I knew it. That's why I hurried. Came through that picking line in the dark and all. I don't know if you realize, General, Sorrel said coldly. Sir, don't you think, if this man's story was true, that we would have heard something? Sorrel did not approve of spies. The spy grimaced blue. You ain't exactly on friendly ground no more, Major. The same Virginia no more. True, Longstreet thought, but there would have been something from Stuart, Longstreet said. General Stuart's cavalry went out a few days back. He hasn't reported any movement. The spy shrugged, exasperated gloomy at Sorrel. Sorrel turned his back and looked at his fingernails. All right, so the previous text suggested that Sorrel trusted Harrison. What is this one's does it show a friendship, a rivalry, or him doubting the report? Well, he doesn't come out and say exactly what he was thinking, but because he doesn't really back him up and he's just kind of thinking, it's probably he's, he's doubting it. All right. That's it for today. Make sure you get that smart skill to a 90, to a 90. Read the explanations if you get it wrong and think about how did I get it right the last time that I got it. You got this. See you tomorrow.